Hey guys, this is Dan from bodybuilderinthailand.com. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about nutrient partitioning. I'm going to explain what nutrient partitioning is and how it applies to bodybuilding. All right, so nutrient partitioning, what it is, is it means the food that you eat going to the cells in your body where you want it to go, okay? So depending on different activities and different foods that you do or that you eat, um, nutrients are going to be, you know, pushed towards muscles or fat or just general, uh, general use by the body, by the brain, etc. And this is able to be manipulated by the activities that you do, by the hormonal substances that are in your body, hormonal levels in your body. Uh, by the foods that you eat and yeah, by the activities that you do, okay? This can be manipulated. So let's first talk about carbohydrates. So there's a, the, mus, the fuel that your muscles use when you are exercising, like doing weightlifting, is called glycogen. And glycogen is made out of carbohydrates. It's made out of glucose. It's made out of car, uh, like starch carbohydrates. And glycogen is really good. A lot of bodybuilders want to have a lot of glycogen because it makes your muscles look good. It makes your muscles look big and full. So for every gram of glycogen, carbohydrate energy that your muscles take up, they all, that, all, that glycogen also attracts and brings along with it two grams of water. And that all goes inside your muscle, okay? Not outside. So this is muscle water inside the muscle which gives the appearance of a bigger, fuller, rounder muscle, harder muscle, pressing against the skin more. All right? So not all carbs are going to be able to be utilized, though, for glycogen. Okay? So a good example of this is fructose. So fructose is the kind of sugar that is found in fruit, but it's also the kind of uh, carbohydrate that is found in something like table sugar or uh, like high fructose corn syrup or just like normal sweetener that's in, you know, something like a cookie, something like that. Um, that's going to be fructose, uh, half of it, because table sugar is split up between half glucose and half fructose. Okay. That's called... Uh, it's called sucrose, the name of like table sugar or just the normal sugar that you would like put in your coffee or whatever is sucrose. And what that is, is it's two different molecules bound together. One fructose molecule and one glucose molecule bound together creates sucrose. OK, so if you're eating a lot of that normal sugar, then half of that stuff of that sugar that you eat is going to be fructose, which cannot be used by the muscles as glycogen. It's actually, fructose is actually processed in the liver. And if it's not used uh, directly for energy right at that moment, then it's turned into, uh, by the liver, it's turned into a triglyceride, which is triglycerides are the main things that uh, make up your fat tissue, your stored fat tissue. Okay. So more than a small amount, more than a low, smallish amount, fructose promotes fat gain because of that. Okay. All right. So things like starch carbohydrates, things like bread or potatoes or, um, or grains, uh, any, any kind of starch carbohydrate, and even those turn into glucose. Those turn into glucose in the body, and those are the kinds of uh, carbohydrates that are uptaken by the muscles, okay? So that's why, you know, rice is always a great one because rice is a starch carbohydrate. So if you eat rice, all of the carbohydrate content in that rice can be taken up into your muscles and can make your muscles be bigger, stronger, rounder, fuller, harder. Okay. But if you ate instead of that carbohydrate, you know, that came from the rice, if you ate instead, you know, sugar to make up those carbohydrates the same amount, well, then now you'd have 
half of them being glucose and half of them being fructose. So you'd only actually get from that, from, you know, even though you're eating the same amount of carbohydrates, let's say you ate a hundred grams carbohydrates from rice and a hundred grams carbohydrates from sugars, you are only having half the amount from the sugar is going to be glucose. Like, but a hundred percent of the carbohydrate from the rice would be glucose, right? Because 50% of the carbohydrate in the table sugar or whatever, or the sugar is, uh, is fructose since it's, since the sugar molecule is a sucrose molecule, half sugar, half glucose, half fructose. Got it. So this would be an example of where if it fits your macros, uh, is, you know, it's not true here. You know, if it fits your macros is a good way for beginners. Uh, and people who are not looking for optimal results, but looking for results to obtain results. But, you know, a carb is not a carb. <laughs> you know, there's these different kinds. And so if you're, you know, if you're getting your carbohydrates, you know, all from sugar, I mean, you're only getting half the amount of potential glycogen that you could be getting if you ate all of your carbohydrates from rice. All right. So that, that's a really good example of nutrient partitioning and the different foods that you eat mattering, not just, you know, eating a certain amount of carbohydrates, eating a certain amount of protein and a certain amount of fat, and then everything else doesn't matter because that, that's not true. The body metabolizes different versions of those macronutrients in different ways and has different capabilities for them. That's the same reason why you know, animal protein, which is a more complex protein than vegetable protein, is more ideal for building muscle. Yeah, you can build some muscle on uh, on vegetable protein, but it doesn't contain the full spectrum of amino acids that protein that's derived from animal sources does, which need to be there for optimal muscle growth, okay? So you can grow muscle on non-animal protein, vegetable protein, but you can optimally grow muscle on protein derived from animals. And then it's a similar thing with, you know, if you got all your carbohydrates from sugar, yeah, you can have, you know, glycogen muscle, st stored muscle fuel uh, from that, but you'll only be getting half as much as if you were eating those carbohydrate sources from things like rice, bread, potato, starch, carbohydrates, which is all glucose rather than sugar, which is half fructose, half glucose. Got it? All right. And then the hormonal environment in your body definitely is going to influence nutrient partitioning as well. So, you know, if you have at certain times a day, you have different hormonal levels in your body. So for example, after a workout, your muscles produce on the surface of your muscle cells, they produce these things called GLUT4 receptors. And GLUT4 receptors tell those muscle cells to intake carbohydrates. It says, uh, we need more glycogen, you know, we've just been using it. We've just been using up all our glycogen doing a workout, and now we need more glycogen. So at those times, uh, the muscles are extra sensitive to uptaking the carbohydrates from your bloodstream into the muscle cells okay so that'd be like after a workout so after a workout would be when you would want to have like more carbohydrates and you'd be able to partition them or move those carbohydrates into muscle cells rather than fat cells which at another time of day you know you may not have uh you know it may be your muscle cells will not be more sensitive to carbohydrates than maybe your fat cells, right? Another nutrient partitioning way is that I want to talk about insulin, okay? Because insulin is a very powerful uh, hormone for your body weight and your body composition. So think of insulin as a super highway that when insulin is present in the blood, it opens up all the cells indiscriminately to intaking energy and nutrients, okay? So that's fat cells, that's muscle cells, that's any cells. 
when insulin is in there, it's like the freeway is open. And at that point, you know, it's a free flow in. Whatever's in your blood goes into the cells, okay? So if you were going to eat a large meal that had a large amount of fat, a large amount of carbohydrates, and a large amount of protein in it, it's going to release insulin. Fat does not cause insulin release, but protein causes some insulin release, and carbohydrates cause massive insulin release. And why? What, what's the purpose of insulin? Well, it's to lower your blood glucose. So when blood glucose goes up, which happens a lot when you eat carbohydrates, insulin is then injected into the bloodstream by the pancreas, and it tells your cells open up and let nutrients in so that we can get this blood glucose level down. And that's why you can eat different amounts of food throughout the day, you know, large meals, small meals, medium meals, no meals, and your body can maintain you know, pretty constant uh, blood sugar level, you know. And uh, so you can take advantage of this and manipulate this principle. For example, if you were going to eat a meal that had a high fat content in it, um, and then you also added a high carbohydrate content to that meal, well, now you're going to have a lot of uh, free fatty acids in your blood from the high fat content. And then in addition to that, uh, you're going to have high insulin levels from the high carbohydrates, right? And so now the this superhighway, the energy superhighway, in your body is now going to be open. The floodgates are open and those fatty acids that are floating around in your blood are going to be able to go right into those cells, the muscle cells, the fat cells, whatever, along with the carbohydrates. Because remember that once insulin is in the blood, it's indiscriminate. Whatever's in the blood gets uptake by the cells. All right. So if you've got fatty acids in your blood, then your fat cells are going to be taking up those fatty acids if there's high insulin. So if you're eating a high fat meal, optimally, you'd want the carbohydrates to be lower so that there was less insulin in the blood. Does that make sense? Because then if there's less insulin in the blood, then you know that super highway is not open of the cells saying, okay, we uptake everything from the blood into our cells now. Um, and, you know, you're not going to get that fat being basically slammed into the fat cells. Those free fatty acids in your blood is not going to be being slammed into your fat cells, right? And so on the flip side of that, say you do eat a high-carbohydrate meal, you want to keep the, the fats lower. So eat a high-carb meal with a high amount of protein with the lower fats. And now you still got that insulin high insulin, right, from the from the carbohydrates, but now you've also got the amino acids from the protein. Amino acids are the building blocks of muscle in your blood, all right? And so your body is going to shoot out insulin from those carbohydrates into your blood and say to the cells, especially the muscle cells, you know, uptake nutrients, lower the blood sugar, okay, lower the blood glucose, uh, because of the carbohydrates, but the protein that was along with that in the blood also, it's indiscriminate. Whatever macronutrients are in the blood get pushed into the cells. So it's going to be like a super highway that like slams those amino acids from the protein meal along with the glucose and carbohydrates that form glycogen into your cells, okay? So that's why people say like the post-workout window is because you got those GLUT4 receptors that are appearing on the outside of your muscle cells saying to refuel on glycogen. And, you know, then you'd want to eat a low-fat, high-carb, high-protein meal because then the muscles are extra sensitive to carbohydrates. So you slam them with carbohydrates and the GLUT4 receptors make it so that the muscles uptake those carbohydrates and pull them in. And then also because you have the insulin in the blood, the protein is also going to be having like a free flow, the protein in your blood into the muscles as well, right? Because it gets a lot, it gets in along with the carbohydrates when the insulin is in the blood. And uh, then you're going to have optimal refueling, rebuilding, uh, and anabolic 
uh, window. You know, that's what they talk about, you know, an anabolic window. So obviously that you, these uh, effects are, you know, potentiated by other agents that you may, uh, you know, have in your body, other supplements. Um, so an optimal hormonal environment for bodybuilding is going to make these effects even more exaggerated. But this is what nutrient partitioning is, guys. And I know it's a term that's thrown around a lot and it may be confusing for some. So this was a general overview and breakdown of uh, nutrient partitioning, what it does, what it means, uh, and how it applies to your bodybuilding. All right. This is Dan from bodybuilderinthailand.com.